Good morning, Mission Control. Well, today is a pretty big day for me. I'm actually very, very hopeful that I can finish up building all of the sensors. So let me show you what I got done here. Uh, this box has the weather station and all the boxes and cables and everything. I actually got it all done. Everything's put together. Now, the bad news is... Uh, <laughs> It took me four days to troubleshoot all of the code and the connections, and I really have come to absolutely despise cables. Um, my future designs are going to be with as little cables as possible. They are horrendous in order to build, so any of you out there considering doing an automation project, try to minimize, really get rid of, like, with extreme prejudice, take out all cables from your design. <laughs> They're necessary. But they are so painful and it is so hard. You're sitting there and you're troubleshooting. You're like, why is this not working? Why is this not working? You're, you're putting voltage meter on everything. You're like, why is this not working? And it ends up being one little itty bitty cable deep inside of a connector that somehow got worn or broke or wasn't crimped all the way or you over crimped. It is a real problem. Anyway, got those all done. The environmental sensors are all ready. They're ready to be installed. Uh, before I go and install them, I got to get the uh, uh, water and the microgreen, the fans, and the electrical monitoring sensors done. So here are all the parts. We have relays, the power monitoring, the solenoid valve for the water, as well as uh, the flow sensor, the water level detector, the faceplate, and of course, I love my little double gang boxes, so I got plenty of those uh, to go around and to deal with. And right now what I have... Uh, I have a whole bunch of cables that I have to build. Here you can see I've actually started, I think I have, what is it? Oh my goodness, here, all the notes. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 cables for a grand total of 36 cables that I have to build today. Hoy. So anyway, I got to get to work on those, get them all built. Put them all together. Actually, I think I have more than that. Now there's about 40 cables because I got the ones that go outside of the box. This is all just the stuff inside the box. So I'm going to get to work on those and hopefully we get this all done today. So all here right. we go. Uh, well, it's been about three hours since I started and I now have the boards connected to their main connection point. The, so I have all the cables from the back of the box to the boards all put in place. There's the other one. It's all pretty. So all of this is goes into the box, gets covered up. It'll be nice and pretty in there. Uh, I got power coming in, and I have all my connections made. So about halfway done. Now I've got to make all the cables out here, uh, which will be the long ones. So wow, uh, twelve more cables to go. Six and six. It has been quite a few days since I started on this electronic sensor build for the uh, water and the electronic monitoring. I got to tell you, it's been really, really frustrating. Uh, I got the cables and the actual hardware built really, really fast, but I've spent a lot of time doing the software hardware integration effort. Uh, it has been really frustrating. In the end, there was three things that I did wrong. Um, the baud rate that I had set for one of the serial devices, um, was wrong. So what that means is uh, one of my devices was talking Chinese and uh, the other one was talking French and uh, they couldn't understand each other. So that's the baud rate problem. Another problem that I had was uh, I had a 5 volt power supply set up to a 12 volt power supply and that's not going to work. Uh, so it was getting way too much juice. And the third problem that I had is I didn't have capacitors on the voltage regulator. So thank you for telling me that. Thank you subscribers for pointing that out. Really that was a big help. Those three things caused lots of software problems believe it or not. I couldn't troubleshoot everything because it wasn't working right. So uh, we've had a few things happen. Uh, first the ultrasonic sensors uh, that I bought. Uh, they decided to go ahead and burn out on me. Uh, and as some of you have pointed out they weren't waterproof anyway. So it's probably a lucky thing that I burned them out. So i am actually got some waterproof ones on the way. And the reason I want to go with ultrasonic sensors rather than the float sensor that a lot of you recommended is because the float sensor will tell me, hey, the water's too high, turn off. But it won't tell me where is the water level at. And that's something that I actually want to track because if I can see where the water level is at, I can see how much 
evaporation is occurring in addition to the fact that you know water is being sucked out to go into the grow beds and then it falls back in so over time I can start to see the cyclical nature of it I'll start to see water levels start to drop because of evaporation so that's why I want the ultrasonic sensor in there rather than just the float sensor so uh, that that's gonna come but um, was another problem that I had that was the biggest sensor problem. So I've got all the sensors here. I got the power sensor. I got the valves and everything. There's a flow sensor in here. Uh, the fan relay is here. And then right now I got it. Uh, this is getting programmed right now from the computer. Uh, so it's uh, going to be good to go. That's going to go in the quad box here. Go into that. <sighs> so <clears throat> it's not perfect. There's things I really wish I could have done differently. Um, I actually am starting to see that as part of the lane one and lane two rework, the microgreen work, if you've been following along, I think all these little sensor boxes are going to end up being one big control panel. Um, something more along the lines, let me show you here, get all this out of the way. This was the original prototype, and I think this is probably what we're going to go back to. Something big like that. Having the control for the entire lane in one big box like that. I think that's what we're going to end up going back to, but I'm not sure yet. Got to do some design work there. So uh, that's all I got for this video. In future video, I'll get the install and everything taken care of. Uh, show you that. Uh, got the weather sensor. That's all ready to go. Right there in that box. And with the sensors that I'm taking out here, uh, I'll actually be able to go out and install everything. Oh, I uh, forgot to say this. Um, lane 3, I'm not going to actually install the sensor suite into it and the reason for that is uh, Mrs. Martian and I sat down and we looked at our list of projects that we have to do this year and essentially there's just no way we can get everything done. So we're going to be moving all of our efforts, uh, we're going to be completely focusing on lane 1, lane 2, the insulation solution, the heating solution, humidity management, as well as the microgreen processing. That's going to be our objective this year. Um, we decided not to paint the house this year. We're going to cut back on some projects around the ranch as much as we can. And we're really going to focus on those microgreens since they do produce the money that we need to continue to do the development effort. So that's the game plan. Anyway, enough talk. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, i got the install coming up in the next video. Uh, in the meantime, if you like it, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Uh, you can subscribe if you like, hit that little bell to be notified. If you don't get notified on a frequent basis, uh, we recommend Facebook and Twitter. Uh, sign up there and you'll get notified more often than what YouTube does. Who knows why YouTube's not working. Anyway, hey everyone, this is Real Martian, out.